Hello. I am Dr. Cosmo. Let's continue the lecture. Let us reflect back on the topic discussed in Chapter 5. Do you recall the analogy of the rain? Even if there were those who say, I am very sensitive, so I can feel water vapor in the air, this does not mean that it is raining. If we treat the water vapor in the air as rain, then it would mean that it is raining every day. Now, a friend of yours is calling you on the phone. It's raining right now. Let's not eat dinner at the beachside terrace tonight, he says and sends you a picture of the rain. What would you do? You would probably promptly respond, okay, I understand. However, how did you substantiate this? Ultimately, you are making a decision based on whether that person is someone you can trust or not. It's based on a belief that he wouldn't tease or deceive you. However, to tease or to deceive are words that presuppose that one is not stuck in an illusion, but what if that person wholeheartedly believes that the illusion is real? Then, can that person not escape illusion? The people that surround you are nonetheless only a projection of your subconscious mind, so if you are caught in an illusion, then the people you trust are surely also stuck in an illusion. However, say that you have never noticed this illusion before. It is quite possible that in your world, confusion is the norm. Would you believe that? And how is it possible to escape from such confusion? Recall that, MJ thought of some rules. 1. The world perceived with direct senses is reality. 2. The world perceived with indirect senses is less than reality, an illusion, or a fantasy. The world of direct senses is very easy. For example, you can say that anything you can touch is real. The world of indirect senses then is excluded from reality. For many, even though they create these rules, if they do not correlate to their own common knowledge, many begin to neglect the rules and think, what? There's no way, and eventually break their own rules. Furthermore, if those rules are deemed as a disadvantage to them, they abandon the rules altogether saying, who cares about these rules? Ultimately, it is impossible to escape from their emotional decisions, or judgments which are based on their loss or gain. In order to find the truth, MJ decided not to rely on his common sense nor think about the disadvantages, but rather, he thought about things according to his rules. He believed that this was the only means of breaking away from illusion. He knew he should not trust his emotional reactions. Now, what created this difference or gap to allow for the use of direct or indirect senses? It is a difference in the amount of thoughts. When the amount of thoughts is low, you cannot use your direct senses. Also, the senses that are lacking are supplemented by illusions. However, because everyone does this, they don't realize that they are filling the missing areas with their own illusions. Let's remove them according to the rules. Then, what happens? Many things begin to be omitted from reality. Yes, in fact, history and geographic landscapes are no longer reality. These are things that one believes to exist. In actuality, no one has ever seen history, and even shapes of land are something that people blindly believe to exist. There is probably no one who has actually seen the shape of a country with his or her own eyes. At the very least, one must not treat what they saw indirectly as the same as seeing things with their direct senses. If one were to say, history does not exist, you may want to respond, that's ridiculous. I understand your feelings well, but, let's take another perspective. How, then, does what we view as history appear before us? Again, please recall the wife who was the subject of domestic violence from her husband. It was the wife's violent nature in the past that is manifesting her husband's existence. If the wife is not currently violent, then this is because she has a different personality inside. Let's call this personality inside her consciousness a type. Inside our consciousness, there are a number of various types. In psychology, they use such types to analyze people. There are some who divide five types, others divide nine types. Either way, the numbers of types of people are not too many. In the case of the violent husband, this was a projection of the wife's past type. That is to say, these types have time difference. Just as the earth's stratum, the types in the consciousness are layered chronologically. Here, let us use four types as an example. Let's say that inside our consciousness, there is a following pattern, 
a circle, a triangle, a square, a diamond. These are lined up chronologically. This is projected on history, then, this appears as the following. The circle, the triangle, the square, the diamond are projected as the modern age. Then, like a rainbow, there is another projection on the outer layer, which is the Middle Ages. This is how the Middle Ages and the modern age are formed. With this structure, you may begin to agree that the events occurring in two different areas are fractals of each other. History is nothing but a projection of what is originally inside our consciousness. Time was not linear, but rather arched. Then, you feel as if these arcs are connected in a spiral, and in your mind, time feels like it is one long line. Recall that MJ felt that at times history is not continuous. This can also be explained by the same logic. History is not linear, but rather it is what the consciousness senses as the function of time. In other words, the path of the consciousness develops into groups of a particular type of pattern. This then is projected according to some chronological order and is arbitrarily connected giving the sense as if it was linear. For this reason, some things are aligned according to the consciousness development, but at times, the orders get mixed up. History is fundamentally disconnected. Also, with regards to projections of the modern age and the middle ages, each can be projected independently. After projecting the modern age and observing it, one can project and observe the middle ages. As a result of this, it seems as though the past is mimicking the future. MJ read into the fractals of the two eras, and at that time, he was curious about the length of time as well. It seemed as though the older era had a longer cycle. For example, the time span from William's Norman conquest of England and the Fourth Crusades was 138 years. However, the time span of what is the fractal of this event, the time period between the collapse of Japan's Edo Shogunate to the Pacific War was 74 years. Of course the lack of an insufficient communication devices and methods was one reason to contribute to this reason. However, MJ thought there must be another factor that's affecting this. He sought to find the answer to the puzzle. If time is an arc and is projected from the same center, then of course, the outer layer or the older era is a longer segment, so the width of time becomes expanded. Thus, the older the era, the longer it seems. You may still not feel convinced that time is just a projection. However, even if you cannot agree now, I suggest that you first think about things as being a projection. The reason is if you think of things as projections, then many hints will appear before you to help you solve various mysteries. Time is a projection of patterns that exist in the consciousness. The further out you go, the more the circumference expands. Then what happens? I previously gave an example of how the width of time portrayed by a particular pattern is expanded. Keep in mind that in addition to the expansion of width, the energy fades away. Let's compare the energy projected from the center of a light bulb. Needless to mention to you scientists, but as the space in a room expands, the illumination diminishes. The point being, even though the room expands, the brightness of the bulb never changes. In fact, the two worlds are using the same energy. When compared to history, this is the same as the modern age and the middle ages using the same energy. Yet, our brains cannot recognize this. This is because you are always living in a world that uses the direct senses. That is why even while looking at B, you automatically pile A on top. In another metaphor, if you are wearing a pair of yellow glasses, you'll see a wall surrounding you yellow, even though it is white. In this case, your glasses are A, and the wall is B. B is always added A. This is just an illusion. However, you continue to mix illusion with reality without even realizing it. In this way, B is now recognized as A plus B, so it becomes an even greater world than simply being A. What would happen if 10 screens were layered on top of each other? 
In reality, the tenth layer is darkness to the point where you need to navigate with your hands, yet, you add it on from forms 1 to 9, so you believe that the tenth layer is shining brightly. The problem lies in the fact that since the moment you were born, you never lived in a world that doesn't have direct senses. In fact, the further you see, the screen is thought to have an immense amount of energy. This makes you believe that there are stars and galaxies in universe which have gigantic energy.